Hi guys, I am back. Please ignore the paint under my nails. <laughs> I can't get it out, but I promise that's not dirt. Um, I thought I would do a quick art haul video because I just got some new art supplies, which I'm excited about. I do have a bit of a cold, so if I sniffle and stuff, sorry about that. But let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with the smaller stuff since they're on top of the stacks, but first I got some of these um, just cheap brushes. I wanted something long for like smooth details. I will say these ones look a little cheaper than these ones. They're different brands. I'm opening them up one second. So I just wanted to show you what one of them looks like. They're this shape and they're nice and long. I wanted stuff long like this. I hope that's on camera right. But I wanted something long like this for like swooping motions, like long, slender, smooth details. And so I got these. I was hoping these ones would be longer than they are. Um, I'm gonna take the plastic off so there's not a reflection. Yeah, I was hoping these would be longer than this, but you know, they're not horrible. I'll take what I can get. They're at least somewhat longer than normal brushes. And yeah, I'm excited to try those out. These are just Zhu Ting brushes. It's nothing fancy. I basically just went and looked for like the cheapest long brushes on Amazon. Everything from here is from Amazon, by the way. And these are S Danart. And that was the smaller pack I got. So yeah, that's all for brushes. Oh, technically I got this also. This is a Faber-Castell, one of their water brushes. I did try this just for swatching one of the products. Let me see, see there we go. I did try swatching something with this, so I've technically used it. And I'm glad I did, because I can tell you the pros and cons to this then. So one of the cons, in my opinion, is like this part is like closed. There's water in there, so I can't push it right now. But um is normally all the way down here. And when you want to suck up water, you pull that out. And my problem with that is like, if I'm leaving water in this over a few days, if I don't want to empty it out and refill it in a few days and I just leave the water in, that means this is out. And if I bump into it and like anything pushes in that, like the water is going to flow out and get places. Like I can't throw this in a bag the way I could a different water brush. So I didn't know it was like that. And honestly, if I had known, I wouldn't have bought this which sucks because I was like, oh, it's Favor Castell, which is my favorite brand or one of my favorite brands. I was like, so it should hopefully be like a better quality brush. And then it had that. And I was like, I can't even put this like in a to-go bag because of this, or if it's filled already, I can't. So that's definitely con. And also this has these little push buttons to like push the water into the brush, into the bristles. But I feel like it doesn't really work. Like you're really pushing on those for ages like crazy trying to get water to go through. So I found it's easier to just push this down a little and it'll push the water into the brush. So I can still easily get water into the brush, but not the way they intended. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on this. There are definitely some cons to this. So I'll probably end up trying other brands, like one that doesn't have this bit and hopefully I have better luck. I'm still gonna use this though. I just can't put it in a to-go container or bag filled with water, which is inconvenient. All right, that's all for the brushes. Next, I will do these. This is a set of Faber-Castell 9000 series art pencils. And the reason I got this, I always have trouble opening it, one second. There we go. The reason I got this, oh, I didn't put one of my pencils back, sorry. I swatched these as all on paper. I haven't used them, used them. But I got these because I used to do, oh no, there we go. I used to do graph, like realistic graphite portraits, which if I remember, if editing me remembers, I will put up an example. I haven't done any for like maybe 10 years though now. So like it's gonna be old art, but <laughs> I used to really enjoy it. So I wanted to get a higher end set of the different, I don't know what you call this, like the different darknesses of pencil. And I love Faber-Castell. I wanted the pit pencils because they're anti-shine and I thought that would be much better for portraits, but their pit pencils don't have, or at least the ones on Amazon, like they were all B's. 
which is the bolder, it's the darker pencil, and there weren't any H's, which is the harder lead. And I'm probably gonna do a video on this in the future, but just like in case anyone doesn't know, the H's are harder, which means you get a smoother line, but it's much lighter. It's, you can't get as dark of a line. Um, so I use those for my lighter, I use those for skin because the skin's usually not crazy dark and it's less grainy and there's less of the white speckles from the texture of the paper with the H's. So you actually get a more realistic skin in your realism portraits. So I needed H's. And so I got these, even though it only goes up to 2H, I'm gonna have to supplement with some of my Prismacolor H pencils. Um, so yeah, I I got this, but I'm gonna have to add things to it because they have more Bs than I would ever need and fewer Hs than I need. Either way though, I love Prismacolor and I love, the, sorry, I love Faber-Castell. I love Prismacolor too. I love Faber-Castell and their 9000 series and everything. And it came in a really nice case because it actually holds the pencils where they are rather than just being loose and letting them knock around because it's got these divots um, so that they fall into the shape of it and it locks. So I can put this in a travel case. Oh, sorry guys. Anyways, and it locks so I can put this in a travel case. So yeah, I'm excited about that. I did swatch these in my sketchbook. Did I bring the right sketchbook? Ooh. I will be right back. I think I didn't bring my swatch sketchbook and I squat, I swatched a lot of these products already for you. So you don't need to watch me do that. So I'm actually going to be right back and get that sketchbook. All right, I'm back and here are the swatches I was talking about. That is these pencils. And as you can see, this is 8B for example, and the lines are thicker because it's a softer lead. You can't get as fine of a point, so as sharp of details with it, and it's much darker. And I know you can't really tell, but when you do it light, like I said, you get a lot more white from the paper and the texture. Whereas this, for example, is 2H and it's a much lighter pencil. You can get much lighter colors, a much smoother grainless look, which is better for, you know, skin and hair and stuff like that. And then you can get sharper details, but you can't get the dark shadows you need. So that's why I wanted a big range like this. And some of these swatches are from more of this stuff. So we're gonna keep this. Um, one of them, I will say right now, this is the item I am the most disappointed in. And by that, I mean it's the only item I got that I'm disappointed in. And that is the Shade and Tone Mixed Media Set from Derwent. So I have just like their long set of just different colors. I don't remember how many it has in it, but it's got a range of colors. It's not just like this. And I think it's really convenient for when I'm just sketchbooking. It helps me add color to my sketchbook way more than I normally would because it's so convenient. So I was like, oh, I'll try this because I do a lot of characters and everything. And I was like, if I can get good skin tones or anything, that would be really nice. So I bought this and it comes with 12 colors. And it randomly comes with like three pencils also which I'm gonna pull out. And what was weird about these is that they have these colors on them as if this is like a terracotta color and this is a green. Like I thought they were colored because of that, but I don't know why they have those because I swatched them and it's literally, they're just graphite, except for this one, which is that one. But I was very confused on that. I don't know why they have a color band on each of those. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's not what I bought this for. This is what it looks like. And first of all, you're going to see the first main problem. I swatched this already, but look at, this is saying these are these colors. It's literally the swatches they give you are all reds and then they're all just brown. Like I, that was already way off and I was really not happy with that. But then I went ahead and swatched them and it's this area. And when I was done, I was like, wow, like this is my normal set, by the way. I was like, I literally could create all of these with just like this color, this color, and like white. And then I could create all of these with just like the black and the white with maybe a hint of that. And I was like, that's really disappointing. So 
if you were considering buying the set, like, I'm sorry, Derwent, but like, don't. Like, like, just save your money. Like, you could buy their full set where you have all these colors, still be able to easily make all of these, and then you'd still have the rest of the colors to work with. So, and it's in the same, like, convenient set and everything. I was really disappointed in this. I honestly don't know if and when I will ever use this. So, that was sad. I was really disappointed, and I... If I could just get my money back, I hate doing returns, but if I could easily just get my money back, I would, because I was just really not happy with this. So let's move on to happier things, and let's get back to the stuff I am happy with. <laughs> um, I got the Ecoline brush set of 30 different colors. And I think it's funny because if you look, it just repeats additional, additional, additional everywhere. It's down here also. I was like, what is happening? But these are the watercolor markers. And this page is all of these swatches. This is the markers. These look a little funny. And this one does because the paper was doing that thing where it absorbed like my oil from my skin. And then the marker didn't want to light on the paper so I actually had to go over these three a few times they're actually really nice colors they just look kind of gross because I had to keep going over it on here I will say though that even going ignore the drawing I'm going to be painting there even going over them multiple times though on this paper they didn't bleed through so that was really nice this is my Moleskine by the way um I love this set though I love that they're all lighter colors I did think it's really weird though that this entire set there's no red and I was like, that's strange. But I already have, here we go. These are my other Ecoline markers I already have. So I already have like reds in there. And these are the bolder colors, the bolder, darker colors. So this was just a perfect addition to the ones I already had. Very happy with it. My only complaint on these is that anyone who knows Ecoline markers know they're a very juicy marker. Like they really fill them with that watercolor. And that's great. But for some reason, there was just a handful of markers in this set that was like half as juicy. And that really worries me that they're going to dry out much earlier than the others. Like it was these three, like I can tell just by looking at them, this one... And I think these two, possibly even like this one also, were just so much less juicy than the other markers. You can see, at least I can see, how much like thicker this one on as opposed to like the streakier ones. So that worried me a little. Um, but I love the colors otherwise, and I'm really happy with this set. Next, I forgot to grab it, but I got a Muji... Um, mechanical pencil and that's just for using in my sketchbook but again I forgot to grab it I'm sorry I was trying to grab all of this stuff from my art desk and move it into here onto this filming desk and being small it was in my traveling bag and so I forgot to grab it these are just the refills which I also bought I haven't used it yet so I can't really tell you how that is um the Favorite Castell pencil set, I did forget to say, it comes with, if you get the set I got, it comes with the kneaded eraser from Faber Castell, and it comes with just a small little pencil sharpener, and they're like white rubber eraser, which most people just see those like block rubber erasers and they steer away from them. But I just want to say like those white rubber erasers specifically from Faber Castell are amazing erasers. They get a lot more of the sketch up than normal erasers in my opinion but they don't tear up the paper so i actually love those next i got a art creations like larger sketchbook these are the same size except this is like i know you can't really tell but this is just a few millimeters shorter for some reason um but it's the art creation sketchbook there's 80 sheets in here it's just 94 pound like 140 gsm but that works for me and it's 8 by 11 I prefer larger sketchbooks. I know a lot of people prefer the smaller ones, which I have like four of the smaller ones in this brand, but I wanted more large ones because this is my only large sketchbook, which I prefer, and I never use it because I treat it so preciously because I don't have any backups of this size or anything that I decided I'm going to start just like buying backups so that I feel more free to use this. But yeah, the art creations are known for having like yellower paper like a yellow cream which bothers some people but it really doesn't bother me i feel like when it's not stark white using colors and things 
doesn't just, I don't know, it doesn't stand out like in a way where it feels like you put something on the page that doesn't belong there. I kind of like that creamy yellowy paper, but I know many people don't, which is why I'm mentioning it. <laughs> um, the only thing I'm going to swatch here on the video for you, just in case people don't know how to use it, is this. And this is graphite powder. It's from Ghidorah. And this is the professional artist quality. I love this stuff. I learned how to use this when I took an art class just at the community college and I absolutely fell in love with this method of doing like portraiture and stuff. So what you do is you rub this onto the page. It says you can use a brush to do that but I found it really rubs into the paper better if you use a paper towel to rub it in. And then all of that gray is your mid-tone. So then you can use pencils to create shadows and erasers to create highlights and it gives you so much more depth with such smaller amount of work but I'm gonna put just a tiny bit right here and hopefully not too much and rub it in a little so you can see what I'm talking about. I am also very happy with the size of this container. I thought it was gonna be much smaller and then I was gonna be kind of disappointed because it wasn't super cheap. I think it was it was either $12 or $16 and I was like ooh that's a lot for just graphite powder. Um, but then it ended up being like a very large container, so I was happy with that. But let's see. I probably shouldn't do this on a page of like, whew. let's see if that's, that's enough. I'm just doing a tiny bit, and I'm going to move this up for you. You just sprinkle some on. Yeah, and then you rub it in with paper towel, and you just do little circles to make it smooth so you don't get streaks and stuff. And you would do this, or at least... For what I'm talking about, you would do this over your entire piece of paper. So then you start with just this mid-tone here, which is like a beautiful, very smooth, just mid-tone. And then I guess I could use that needed eraser if I can open it. Here we go. And then you can make highlights with an eraser, or if this were sort of stretched out, you can stretch this into any shape you want and then just like pull up some to make lighter highlights. It's super fun to work with. You can also take your pencils and then use those to, this is, there we go. To add shadows. I mean, you know how that works, but, and then you could blend it out to have a gradient shadow. And then this would be your mid-tone, and then you would have a highlight here, you know, showing that it's curved going into darkness. But yeah, I love graphite powder. I love how it looks, how smooth it is, and how honestly just easy it is to work with. So I'm really excited to use that in some portraits. Now I'm going to set this aside and try not to close it before I seal that because it will get everywhere. Oh, I should probably close this first. All right, next is it weird tool more than like an art supply but it's for making art and that is this this is a light box but look how thin it is it's so thin so it's not clunky the one I used to have not joking was like this thick at one end and it slanted into like this thick it was just the worst thing to have to like store but this I slide in just amongst my sketchbooks like in the little sketchbook holder I have and it's just so convenient it is, I would assume you pronounce this Chow Star, but this is the exact one that I got. And again, I got this on Amazon. And it has three different settings. Like you can turn it up to three different brightness levels. And yeah, I'm really excited because I prefer to sketch digitally or do line arts digitally. It's just so convenient to have all the tools you have to just move things around or tilt them or flip them. And I thought I could do my sketches digitally and then print them out. And then I could use this to trace them either onto canvas or paper and then do paintings or official art of them 
traditionally after that. So I'm really excited for this, even though it's just, you know, a basic kind of tool. And so far it's really nice. I really like that. Uh, the only other paper product I have is this. This is Legion's Yupo Heavy paper. I say paper, but this is a tree free one. This is 10 sheets of their like really thick, it kind of feels like that glossy cardboard paper you use as a kid, but it's specifically meant to be non-absorbent so that you can use like acrylic paint on it and stuff like that. And it's not just gonna like suck all the <laughs> pigment into the paper or bleed. It says you can use watercolor, alcohol links I would agree with, but it says you can use watercolor, but I think it's a little like too slippery for watercolor. I feel like you would have zero control. So <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing watercolor on it, but I am gonna be doing acrylic on this. Maybe gouache, but like where I don't add water to make it watercolory. But Legion Paper is like my favorite paper brand. I love their packs of paper and stuff. So I'm really excited to try this out. And then last, but the thing I was maybe the most excited for, if I can unbury it, is I finally jumped on the bandwagon and got the jelly gouache. I already opened these and I'm not joking that's why I have paint all over my hands and like under my nails but because I had to open all of the lids. I hope nothing's like gotten gross in here. Okay I didn't get paper or paint on these because they weren't perfectly shallow but here are the colors. I'm really excited. The only thing I didn't like was that this whole bottom is metallics and pearlescence and if you've watched my videos you know I hate metallic paints. I just think they never turn out looking, they always look a little tacky, like a little gimmicky. So I'm probably never going to use any of those unless I do a video where I'm like, let's see if I can incorporate metallic and not hate my art. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for these. I think the card said it's a 56 set or like a 60 color set. I don't know. I'm not going to count them all. But yeah, I'm really excited. I haven't used them yet, but I already have a painting planned out. And I'm not going to swatch them because since they're not in containers, they're all open, you can see what colors they are, which is why I'm not swatching these. But I'm very excited. So I want to use these to do more, not just more paintings, but just to like paint in my sketchbook more, like have fun. Like when I draw an OC, maybe actually paint them. And I just want to explore painting more this year because when I was, well, high school, when I was growing up, painting was painting and sculpting were my two art mediums and I don't have access to a kiln anymore so I can't sculpt and I just I've gotten too hard on myself about like painting abilities so I haven't been painting really at all in like years so I really want to just be like it doesn't matter if it's crap like you really enjoy painting like just paint so yeah that was the last item I got and I'm really excited about it Hopefully you guys will be seeing more art from me. I know it's been a while. Anyone who stuck around in my subs, you guys are like the MVPs for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a while. I have chronic illnesses, so I'm disabled. And sometimes it's just I don't have the energy and that could be for like a whole year. I just don't have the energy or my back. I'm having too many problems and I just can't sit at a desk to make videos. So I apologize for that. But I really do want to get better about producing not just art, but art videos. So hopefully you'll see a lot more of me. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Let me know if there's anything you want to see more in depth of, like out of these art supplies. Like if you want to see a full video about my graphite work with graphite portraits or see what I've done with the Himi gouache, anything like that. Um, and I will let you guys know. Bye.